Hello everyone, I am 8mm Mauserman, and this video topic comes from a viewer who sent me an email. I have an email in the description of all of my videos, so at any moment feel free to send me an email there, or leave a comment down below, I'd love to read them. Now, anyway, the viewer asked, do I shoot collectible firearms that I own? And the short answer is yes. I sort of feel like not shooting a firearm that you own is sort of like owning a Ferrari and not driving it. Now, I do have exceptions, and those are firearms like this, Harrington and Richardson, which are unsafe to shoot. I'm not going to shoot a firearm that's unsafe to shoot, however, just about everything else that I own, I do shoot. However, that does not mean that I do the same thing with all of my rifles. Now, I feel comfortable shooting most guns that I own for a few reasons. The first is that guns are pretty safe to shoot almost no matter how old they are, with exceptions. The reason I don't feel comfortable shooting this one anymore is because the timing is out of place. So when I have the gun pulled, there is quite a bit of wiggle room between the cylinders there, and because this isn't made with super high quality metal. Um, that is particular to this gun. However, other guns, like my Remington Mosin Nagant, are really old and they are still safe to shoot. So as long as a gun was well manufactured originally, it should be safe to shoot for a long time. Now there are exceptions, like certain guns, even if they can chamber certain ammo, cannot safely shoot that ammo, but generally speaking the gun is still safe to shoot as long as it has the ammo that it was made for. The second reason is that guns are sort of like cars. In the way that when they are brand new, they have a certain value, and then after they're used, they have less value. However, they maintain that same level of value pretty well as long as they stay in pretty much the same condition. What I mean by that is that when this Savage Rifle was brand new, it had a certain value to it. When I took it out and shot it, it did lose some of that value because it was no longer a new firearm, it's now a used firearm. However, if I take this out and shoot it and don't put any new gouges or scratches in it, it's not going to lose any more value than really it already has. And the third reason, pretty similar to the second one, is that aside from normal minor parts, guns of these ages don't normally break under normal use. So this is my 2447 Mauser. We've seen this many, many times on the channel. And extractors on guns like these are disposable parts. The extractor is this piece right here on the side that I'm rotating. Extractors on firearms tend to just go bad over a long period of time. Now it will take thousands of rounds before this extractor goes bad, but at some point this extractor will go bad assuming that I keep on shooting it and using it. When that happens, I'll just put a new one in. It's a pretty easy part to find. So because there are pretty easy parts to find that do break, I feel comfortable shooting this gun. However, as long as you perform proper preventative maintenance, like keeping the gun well lubricated and uh, cleaning the barrel well after shooting corrosive ammo, the gun won't lose value from breaking over time. It's not like all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the receiver is just going to blow up. And the gun will stay in good shape as long as you shoot good ammo and maintain it properly. 8mm Mauserman in post-production here, and I realize I had a pretty major oversight. I forgot to mention two things that can affect value by shooting the rifle, and that is that you can wear down the rifling in the barrel, and you can cause issues with headspace just by shooting the rifle. Now, the reason why I forgot to mention these is that with most bolt actions, you will need to shoot thousands upon thousands of rounds in order to see issues in either of these areas, especially with the barrel in most firearms. You especially see excessive barrel wear when you fire many shots in rapid succession, so with a bolt action like the rifles I'm talking about today, you most likely won't shoot enough rounds through the rifle to cause those types of issues very quickly. However, it is something worth mentioning here. Also with some rifles, and I know this is particularly an issue with certain Enfields, you can start to see excessive headspace over time by just shooting the rifle. This isn't a problem with all rifles, however it is a big enough issue that it is worth bringing up in this video. And in order to see this problem, you will need to fire several thousands of rounds. So that is why I feel comfortable shooting almost every gun I own except for ones like this one that are unsafe to shoot. However, what circumstances do I feel comfortable shooting them in? Well, I would use the example of my 1891 Mosin Nagant, 
Uh, this one is relatively rare because it's a Remington Arsenal 1891, and 1891s in general are still relatively rare. There aren't that many of them in the country that still exist. Most of them were converted to 9130s. Twenty-eight seventy-nine. So because this is a relatively rare rifle, I will shoot it, I will take it out of the range, but I'm a little bit more careful with it. I wouldn't go hiking in the woods with it necessarily, and I'm just careful not to bang it into things that could mess up the stock or damage it or things like that. However, this is my 9130, and it is less pretty. Part of it is that this is a mid-war production rifle made in 1943, so the Russians did cut some corners when they manufactured it. Their weld lines are pretty rough, and the finish is just not as fine. But more what I'd like to point you to is that the stock is scratched up and worn. So if bad things happen to this rifle, it's not losing as much value as if bad things happen to that 1891. So I don't really want to make recommendations because you should do with your firearms what you are comfortable with. However, for me, what I do is I will shoot almost all of the guns I own. However, if I'm going to take a gun out into the woods or something like that, I take something that's in kind of worse condition, such as my 9130. One rifle that I have an example of is this M44. Uh, this is a 1946 M44, and it is in really, really pretty good shape. There's no major issues on the stock. It still has most of its finish, and the barrel and chamber still has a shiny blue gloss. This is just in really nice shape and almost all matching. So for this gun, I still shoot it, and I still love to do that. However, I am pretty careful with it. One thing that I've been looking for is a Chinese Type 53, because almost all of those that I have seen in the US are in pretty horrible shape. So if I can find a Type 53, then I can have an M44 type rifle that I can carry out into the woods with me and screw around with a little bit, and I don't really have to worry about it getting damaged. That way I can keep this one nice and keep the other one rough. Now what you have to keep in mind is that these are firearms. They're old and they're from a time where they were meant for war. So. They're meant to be handled, they're meant to be fired, they're meant to be used, and normal firing, handling, and use is not going to mess them up or destroy their value, as long as you do your part by maintaining them and taking care of them. So those are my thoughts on firing collectible rifles, but I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. Please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think and your procedures for which firearms you fire and which ones you don't. I'm 8mm Mauserman, and I have fired this 100-year-old rifle, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Hey, John. Hey, John.